Are you ready for a massive Viking invasion? Welcome, guys, to another siege battle in Thrones of Britannia. This is a 4v4, and oh my god, look at this sally out. Pause. Okay, I did not expect this at all. We have the Welsh, who are one of the, obviously, one of the defenders, sallying out and facing their Viking enemies. So this is a pretty big power move here, but I don't know how well this is gonna work out. So let's look at the factions and we'll get back to whatever this is. All right, so we'll start with the attackers. We have Dyflin over here next to him. We have the Norse, we have Northumbria, and then we have this faction, which I'm gonna butcher. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. It's like Suthiar or Suthiar, I, I don't know. It's, it's basically, they're like Dyflin, all right? They're Vikings. They like to sail. Yeah. So that's that force. Uh, defendings. Uh, def defendings? Defenders. We have the Welsh. We have Karakin, which are basically like the Scots here. And we have um, Mercia. Mercia is on the battlefield bringing some feared spearmen. And then way in the back, we or over here, we have East Anglia, which I believe is a Viking... Isn't this like a Viking kind of like Dane law faction, if I'm not mistaken? I'm not sure though. I'm, I'm pretty sure with that kind of, with this kind of logo, this screams Viking. Okay, so let's go back and see how this is going to play out. The Welsh are pushing out. Massive force. Got some swordsmen. Over here, we've got some spear uh, spearmen. Classic, you know, Welsh spearmen. Now, I don't know why he's doing this. I don't think... You know, if you've seen a lot of my siege battles, sallying out doesn't really work with a full force of troops. But maybe he feels, you know... Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so we had a crash, which my Thrones of Britannia crashes all the time. I don't know why. Anyways, what I was saying is maybe they're sallying out because they're trying to set up some sort of, like archer support system where they have their archers because you know the welsh have some very good archers they've got the longbows uh but yeah maybe they're just trying to fight out here so their archers can you know really take their time and shoot at a lot of enemy units but i don't think that's the case i don't think that's the case because he brought two archers how are you gonna bring only two archers to the battlefield when you're playing as the Welsh? They have like the best longbows in the game. They're the best archers in the game. But he is doing an okay job of sending in the infantry and surrounding and getting, you know, some of these Viking units off guard. But it's not gonna work out. And he is doing some damage, but he could have done so much more damage with these troops inside the settlement because obviously you guys know when you're attacking all right sorry guys we had another crash we, had, we had, well what are you gonna do we just gotta keep pushing through it i guess uh but yeah the welsh still selling out we'll do a little bird's eye view so you can get the full picture here and you know what i think what i was gonna say is that if you watch my battles if you know total war the attackers get more money so when you sally out and face the attackers as if it's a pitch battle you're going to lose because you know you don't have as many troops or as good as quality troops because your enemy had more money and if if you only bring i guess they have three archers here if you only bring three archers of longbows this whole archer strategy isn't going to work and look at this is another reason this issue right here Look at that. The hammer and anvil of Cav. And there's nothing you can do about it. He's got nothing to protect his men. And already the Welsh are starting to break. I do appreciate the bold strategy. I really do. But uh, this unfortunately is not leading to much. I guess, you know, they did do some damage to the Vikings. But it wasn't anything too crazy. And now we have Northumbria showing up with reinforcements. Another problem for the sallying out faction forces. You know, they can't get friendlies to come up. And I guess friendlies could sally out with them. But 
Oh my god, that would be suicide at that point. And look at all the breaking Welsh. Let's go ahead and look at elsewhere on the battlefield because it is really starting to pick up. We have the Norse infantry pushing the walls here as Kirikin has some sword band who is holding off the Jarls uh, Huskarls. Jarls Huskarls. I don't know, rolls off the tongue. So the fight is getting pretty spicy here. And now we have East Anglia taking on Dyflin. And... You know, the Welsh might have had a made a, might have made a mistake with the Sally out. But looking at Dyflin, so far, they're doing like this wave attack thing. I'm not really a big fan. And I don't know why they only sent up two siege towers. They brought plenty more. And a ram, which I guess they destroyed the gate with a ram. But they could have pushed up these siege towers and that would have given them many more. Look how long this wall is. You could fit many more siege towers up here. Uh, but this is going to make it really easy for East Anglia to hold only three spots of the wall. You have the gate and the two siege towers. So this is really promising for East Anglia, which is good because the Welsh are getting slaughtered right now. And uh, the defenders need some kind of minor victory to get back into this fight. Sword, water, uh, sword warrior still going in the fight here against some Jarl Huskarls. We even have some Norse who have bro broken through. Look at this. He's got, yes, yeah, some long axes. Oh, yeah, these boys aren't, they're bringing short axes. They're bringing the long axes to the fight. Oh, the tower crumbles. Yes, the settlement is aflame. That is not good. Here comes more troops coming in. I believe, what is this, Northumbria? Yes, this is Northumbria trying to support the, the Norse. And then we've got forces clashing over here as well. He actually is falling back a unit of sword here, sir. Here, sir. He's sending in some Danelaw axemen instead. <laughs> Our defenses must hold. Uh, so right now they're just cleaning up what's left of the Welsh. You can see there's a little bit of a force here. Some spearmen. Honestly. Oh, enemy general is dead. What? 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 Okay. Okay, what? <laughs> now when I first saw that, I thought it was the Dyflin general. The Welsh general sallied out by himself and died? I'm not sure what's going on with the Welsh here. <laughs> I'm not sure what's happening. Uh, we, uh, well, the Welsh have sent in some swordsmen to try to help out over here, but we got some cab that's just going to flank around and cause some issue for the Welsh. So, I mean, again, the Welsh did do some damage. There's no denying that. But they could have done so much more against this Viking army if they just held the walls normally. Uh, so, yeah, that's why usually when you see players sally out, one, it's with Cav because they're fast moving and can get out of trouble. trouble. And two, uh, they only send like one or two, maybe like four units at the max because if they lose them without gaining too many kills, it's not the end of the world. And that's why you don't really see a lot of, you know, full army sally outs, but they're fun to watch, that's for sure. My God, look at Kierkin holding here with some sword band, breaking some of the Northumbrian soldiers. So the city is a flame that will affect. Yeah, supplies minus one, melee skill minus one. And now we've got reinforcements coming in from the north or the Norse. And we kind of zoom out here to kind of see what's going on here. Kirkin's still holding on a little bit. They are breaking some of these guys over here. 
And then we got Mercia going in to help. But they have taken this section right here. The Norse. But Kirkin has fallen back and have set up a new defense at this choke point. That's actually a pretty solid position there. And then on this side, with the Welsh out of the way, which, oh my god, they still have troops. The Welsh still have troops. Well, look at the bounce of power. Look at this. Wow. Let's see. So enemy man count in this perspective of the replay, the enemy is the, the defenders. They were outnumbered by around 700. And they are now outnumbered by a thousand. No, no, no. Around 700 still with 600. So they killed a decent amount. They're still outnumbered. So the defenders, they can still pull this off. But I'm just worried what's going to happen when the Welsh are gone here. I mean, there's a couple troops holding. We have Mercia holding with some main, uh, mailed Thanes. These guys are pretty good. We also have normal Thanes right next to them. So they're going to try to hold this open area. Uh, they are holding back some troops over on this side. But I don't see how long they can hold here. They've got militia. We found our bones. Oh. Okay, so once again, we are back from that crash and the defenders are still putting up a very valiant defense. Archer fire coming in from the Viking attackers. Uh, the Welsh are almost completely obliterated as their last unit is fighting as they sallied out not too long ago. Uh, so, and, well, actually, we have some Welsh longbows who are out of ammo. They got 41 kills. That is criminal. Uh, but I guess he's going to sally them out as well. Uh, we have forces using the siege equipment. Now they are full-on attacking. And look at this. In the back line, we actually have some militia-feared um, archers. So what they're going to do here is they're probably going to shoot as the attackers move in, obviously. Yep, there they go. There they go. Dropping them quickly. And the infantry, this is pretty cool. The infantry is just going to sit here. Oh, wait, no, they're going in. I was going to say, well, no, hold on. Hold on. I like this. You notice this movement here. He's got his infantry kind of holding this angle. And what the archers are going to do, are they, they're going to move across and be able to get a flank on the side and behind the Viking infantry. <sighs> oh, it's like execution style. All right, so let's zoom out. You, oh, look at this, look at this. Kirkin's general is going in for a charge, doing everything everything he can to try to soften up these guys, but there's no need to charge into that. That's good. Well, he's still gonna go for it. They have four kills, now five. So yeah, he's sending in his general to try to help with this battle. Over here, again, looking really good for the defenders. They are taking on Dyflin and, um, the Norse here and they're doing a good job this like I said many times before this is the most promising uh, defense situation for the defenders you get what I'm saying <laughs> defense situation uh, they, this is a minor victory for them and they need to really capitalize on this but at the same time Dyflin you know it's not the end of the world the fact that he's only using the gate Sure, it's not the smartest of ideas, but he's not losing a ton of troops either. And if they can just keep the North Anglia troops busy while their teammates start to make progress over here, then they could start to flank them. And yeah, this will leave an opportunity for Dyflin if they can break through while you know their allies are flanking around. So we'll see if that plays out. 
Uh, but first, they gotta finish off Kirkin and Mercia. They gotta finish them off. And so far, these guys are down for a fight. They are still holding key streets and cities inside the settlement. More and more Vikings coming from the siege towers. Now we got Jarl Haskarls going for uh, the royal followers. Uh, that was a weak charge. Unfortunately, the artillery got in the way. But they're going to disengage here. And they're going to pursue. Oh my god, you got to be kidding me. Alright, I don't care how many times this replay is going to crash. I'm going to finish it. I, I, I don't care. No matter what it takes, I'm going to finish this damn replay. This is the epic battle between me and the replay. It might be even more epic than this battle. No, it's not. not it's not as epic, of course. Uh, but yeah, I'm having some issues here with the crashing. I don't know why, but my Thrones of Britannia just hates me. Anyways, good move there with the general. He saved some blades. He got some good hammer and anvil. Uh, but we've got the Norse setting in some Haskarls to close in on those blades falling back. And that was not a good position for the uh, the Jarls. They go in wedge formation. Oh, I'm sorry, it wasn't a good position for the blades, the black blades. But oh my good goodness, the archer fire coming down. Where's that? Oh, is that the crossbow? We got lowland crossbowmen. This is huge because the uh, the Huskarls are weak to skirmish fire. Here we go, fire. Come in. There you go. So there you have it. Open and fire. They're, in fact, they broke the black blades. But they're just sitting there getting shot. Tragic. Let's see if they get another volley. No, no, no. They're not because the crossbows are... Their vision is blocked. We got another unit of spears. They kind of fire over them. They do still get some good hits there. The crossbows do. Uh, but yeah, they're going to send in reinforcements to help the Black Blades against the Haskarl unit. I think they're going to be able to break the Haskarls for sure. Oh, no. No, the Black Blades break. Amazing. And now we've got some mailed uh, here, sir, here, sir, swordsmen. Over on this side, amazingly enough, Mercia is still fighting. Their archers, though, mostly out of ammo. Uh, the kills aren't anything to be... Like, they're not anything crazy. But they did rack up kills. That's all that matters. You know, they did their part to the most part. But Mercia is putting up a good fight here. I mean, they've been taking on multiple different armies. Northumbria. Now this uh, Soothe... I don't know how to pronounce it. Now this other Viking force. Like, it's crazy that they're still holding here. Very effectively. But there's still a decent amount of reserves over here that are going to push up. We got a lot of troops over here as well. They're going to... They're about to push in. And over on this front, still doing very well. Now, thankfully, Dyflin is finally using the Siege Towers. But it's still only two extra little attacking positions. So... You know, if the defenders are going to win this battle, they got to defeat Dyflin pretty soon here. Because if they can do that and have a decent amount of troops left over, then I think they can clean up what's left of this attacking force over here. But really, it's going to come down to Kirkin and Mercia and basically not winning their fight. Obviously, if they win, that's awesome. But... What they want to do is inflict as much damage as possible to the attackers here that when this force here defeats Dyflin, they can then focus on whatever's left here and clean it up. But you can see that Mercy is now... Oh, they moved in some Royal Thanes! And they're taking on Berserkers! An absolute slaughter. Oh! So, yeah, they've kind of formed this U formation. And now we have some cav coming in to support the infantry up front here. The buildings are on fire. That's going to affect the morale. 
Still only minus one in melee skill. And if we look at the numbers, oh my god, it's so close. They both have over uh, 2,600. Or, or, yeah, 2,600. 2,640 against 2,632. That They are basically even. They are basically even in numbers. Here comes some troops. They're about to take on Mercia, but this is no joke. This force right here, these Thanes can hold for a long time. And look at, they have even more reinforcements coming in. I mean, it's, it's Fjord Axemen, but this is no pushover force. Mercia could actually hold against these defenders. And let's not forget that they have Cav over here as well. Insane. So they're trying to slow down here. I think that it was just a set. Oh, well, hold on. What is going on? The berserkers have broken. These are just archers holding this side. No surprise there that the archers are breaking. But these thanes over here can hold for a while. And let's not forget about Kirkin, who's holding back some troops as well. Looks like East Anglia has sent over some Huskarls, Danelaw Huskarls, to kill some archers. Just kind of using these guys to protect his flank because he is busy fighting Dyflin over here still successfully. But he's going to be careful here. Dyflin is really piling up a lot of troops. Uh, they could easily break their defensive positions, so they might want to send in some reserves. But I get it. You know, he's holding them back, letting them rest as long as possible, and then he's going to send them in. men have rallied more troops formed up here outside the city walls up. got some berserkers oh some berserkers in the fight they have 30 kills so not really worth it a berserker see a berserker unit is definitely more of a support unit you don't want to send them in by themselves you want to send in some infantry with berserkers and it's a deadly duo but yeah, East Anglia, they're still holding. They are still holding. Oh, oh, look at this. Look at this. This unit of Danelaw Huskarls, who's taking care of some archers, have now surrounded the Norse general. And Kirkin is on the other side with some black blades. 105, very healthy unit, relatively speaking. We These guys are surrounded. They are down to their last few units. And the defenders are just slowly but surely crawling back into this battle. Look at this. Mercia has been a thorn in the side for these attackers. They just seem to have more and more more, more and more troops everywhere they go. Now here's my question. What do they have? In, oh, they still... Yes, East, East Anglia still has some spears and they have their warlord's champions. So... They do have some reserves, but it's not much. We also have some sword uh, swordsmen over on this side. But yeah, that's why that's where the um, Mercy and infantry came from. These guys were chilling at the uh, town center, and I guess Mercia felt like, hey, you know what? I might actually be able to win this. But it's kind of tough to tell here. I mean, well, actually, I mean, these are archers. These are Eastman hunts hunters. Like they could, they could break them here. Now there are some uh, berserkers mixed in. I think I saw berserkers here. Here's one. Oh yeah, Northumbria has some berserkers. They've got 42 kills, and there are. I think they have 42 kills. 44 kills. No, I, I'm trying to get the berserkers here. 187 kills. Oof. Berserkers, man, are devastating. They are tough to deal with. Gotta try to kill them from afar. Now we got some troops pushing in. Eastman Hunters. The Mercia, I mean, they're just trying to clean up as much as possible. Let's go back over to the other side. They destroyed... The Norse are pretty much out of the game. They just killed the general there. And now we've got some Black Blades going over to help 
the uh, Mercy a defend against the attackers. Over on this side, oh, it's, well, they're, they're making some ground here. They are certainly making some ground here. And keep in mind, East Anglia has been fighting for a long time, so we could see a break from them. I don't know. I mean, Dyflin, Dyflin is no joke. And look at, he's using the walls here to spread out his troops. And he's going to send in some archers. See, they are desperate. And this is not good. Their flank is getting exposed. <laughs> Under enemy fire. And they still have... Let's see, they've got some mailed axemen, they have some herdmen, and they have some mailed axemen. So that's pretty much it. And they have their general, of course, which is a good unit. So they are starting to run out of... Oh, hold on. So what I was going to say, they're running out of reinforcements, but that's okay because they are starting to break some of these troops. Now, it's mostly archers who are breaking. Here's some sword herdmen coming in. Again, holding that flank. Now, what's really interesting about this position is that they could now, if they have extra troops, flank around and get behind these Eastman herdmen who push this flank. But I don't see any... I guess you've got some low lowland crossbows you can send in. Why not? They could flank around. And look at now they're using fire ammo because they know their morale is low. And they're gonna try to use that to break through them. But oh, this is good news for East Anglia. They have one over at this siege tower. Now would be a good time to send a unit. I would send these Eastman herdmen over to the siege tower to spread out their defenders. Now would be a time to do it. Let's see if he does eventually. But he has dedicated most of his troops over to hold this front against Dyflin. Now back over here, it does look like after many, many minutes in real time game minutes, the attackers are finally going to take this defensive position. Mercia has fallen the Black Blades with three silver chevrons, 169 kills. They're getting surrounded, but they put up a hell of a fight and they're taking on a hearth guard uh, which is the general unit. There you have it. They've finally broken through. And what is left? Well, you got two generals and two units of archers. I guess you got a catapult crew. So that's about it. Basically, you have general units. Over here, well, it looks like because they never pushed the siege tower, North uh, or East Anglia is gaining control of this fight because of the extra troops so that you know the reinforcements he shifted over so if the attackers want to win this and the bounce of power is like it's in their favor but it doesn't feel like it i don't know it it, it feels like the defenders could win this they just got to break down these Dyflin soldiers. More and more, just constantly pouring in. We got archers who are up here. I think they're going to try to get behind the defenders and shoot at their flank. Oh, wait, but there's some uh, feared archers waiting here. Do they have ammo? No, they don't. But they could still use them to, to attack. Where are they going? Okay, here we go. This is what's left of the attackers. Oh, no. Oh, no. Look at this. What happened? It must have been the flanking archers, but a huge amount of East Anglia are breaking. That is tragic. It's still not over, though. Let's not forget. He's got units sitting in reserve here. And... It's basically two choke. Oh, wait, no, he's got a unit, another unit over here. So he is preparing his final defense. And here comes the flanking force. I bet if he could, he would try to get more of his units out of this fight. But 
he had to leave behind. He might have been able to squeeze out a unit from this fight to get to the town center. Just as he turned them around to face the flanking force, he could have turned them around and gotten them out of there. But at this point, he's trying to kill as many as, as possible. And just this pure stubbornness of Dyflin and never really giving up on his position, but also never really throwing troops away. You, you notice how Dyflin kind of took his time with this attack until the until his allies broke through, and then he just started swarming units up here. I think that was a smart play by Dyflin. I think that was pretty good. But now they just got to clean up what's left of East Anglia, and it's coming down to this. He's got his spears, he's got his general, some swordsmen, and more spearmen. So it's not the most amazing of units, but it's going to be a cool last stand, and we're going to see who's going to take it. All right, guys, so the attackers are now in position. This looks like this is going to be the first clash. He's going to counter charge the Royal Huskarls. Oh, he's got archers? Where's the archer fire coming from? Or is that... Oh, I think that was friendly fire from the armored archers, but they're out of ammo now. And sure enough, they instantly broke. And I can imagine that's what's going to happen to everybody else they're gonna instantly break because you know when you look at the attackers they still have three general units they've got this one charging in they've got one over here the hearth guard and then Dyflin has their general as well and sure enough they're burning down buildings that's gonna affect oh yeah minus four melee skill yeah it's not gonna be good so we're gonna sit here and witness their epic stand. I would love for the game to crash right here. How hilarious would that be? Just, you know, we're like less than a minute away from wrapping this up and seeing the end results and it just poop crashes. <laughs> oh man. Archer fire still coming down. Who's that coming from? I think that's from Dyflin now. Oh my god, look at all the professional troops they've got left. They're just charging in. A brave general trying to hold his own. So, I think the defenders could have easily have won this. Oh, uh, there's the break. They could have easily have won this if the Welsh did not sally out. Or even, okay, not even that. If the Welsh left like three or four of their best units inside the city and everybody else sally out, I still think they could have won this. You know, with just that small of a force. It was that close. I think they could have done it. A very, very good stand by the defenders. Um, Mercia was really impressive. Uh, look at that. Merc really, honestly, Mercia, uh, Goose, who was East Anglia, and Dragon Players, uh, are, uh, I, I'm, I can't speak right now for some reason. Kirkian, that's it. They did all really good here and nearly won the day. Uh, but yeah, great job. This was actually sent in by Joe on Joe on it. He has his own channel. It's linked down in the video description. Definitely check that out. He does a lot of siege battles as well. Uh, but this was a great battle. Let me just go ahead and show you all the kills. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. Um, yeah, it was a great fight and down to the wire. So appreciate you guys coming out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on the battlefield.